Hi, Xinhua. Hi, how are you? Oh, you said my name very nice. Perfect. Not OK, yeah. My name. Xinhua. Perfect. How are, you um, I, how are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> you? Uh, um, not too bad. Thanks for um, thanks for doing this. No, this. Thank you for having me. You're doing this is such an amazing platform. Oh, cool. it's uh, more than two you're... years now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, do you want to test your slides out? Yeah, sure. Let's uh, share screen. looks uh, working good great thank you uh no i didn't no 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 i didn't you i didn't see it you, you, you did not see it oh sorry do you see now now i do yes power good. power of albumin yes good 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 great <clears throat> great so you only recently moved to san francisco yeah, I actually, um, I was at Harvard, including my training, almost 20 years. So I was yeah. at that, including to UCSF in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, my, my family is still in, uh, in Boston area because my that time my daughter was in high school, need to finish high school. When she finished, she said she wants to go. She got into Harvard. She said, I'm going to Harvard, not going to West Coast. Okay. And my husband said, we all say East Coast because my son is in middle school. We in the, I don't know whether you know Brookline area, I mean Boston area. So Brookline is close to the, oh, you know, you do know? I did my postdoc in Boston. Oh, yeah, of course, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, we live in Brookline. So so the, then my, my son is right now going to eighth grade. So he likes his school. That's what I'm doing, the bi-coastal commute. Um, what's your um, what's your status on United? <laughs> no, I don't mostly fly uh, with JetBlue. Oh, because of Boston. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Um, I I'm living in Shanghai right now. I'm in Spain, but my family's in Shanghai. Uh huh. Yeah, I think the COVID uh, one silver lining for you and me is we can run the lab remotely. Huh? Exactly, exactly. Oh, you must be very late in Spain. It's like a yeah, awesome. yeah. It's it's late. Hi, Gong. Hi, Ara. Good to see Hi, you. Hi, Xianhua. Hi, Gong. I see you. Hi, I should have changed my uh, background. That's is uh, for company. <laughs> Let As me you see wish. what else is better. That's good. Maybe yeah, this is better. better. <laughs> I'm also in the hotel. So. <laughs> Love beach. Can, can you, I haven't been to the beach for a while. Can you test your slides? Oh, yeah. Yes. Let me uh, share screen. All right. Okay. And let me uh, play. Is this good? Great. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, Xianhua, are you going first? Or I'm going first. Yeah. Xianhua. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, then I, I I will stop sharing. All right. And then I'll say a little, I'll I'll do a little bit of an introduction first. Thanks okay. for um. So where where are you now? You're in uh, Guangzhou. Um, where, where yeah, I should be in Guangzhou, but currently I'm uh, traveling in Suzhou. Yes. Okay. I'm uh, having a, a couple of meetings, and also our company is in Suzhou. I'm uh, uh -huh. working with uh, my uh, uh, company team right now in Suzhou. Got it. My family's in Hainan right now. Hainan. Oh no, not in Sanya. Hopefully, not 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 in Sanya. Oh, yeah. I was thinking of going to Hainan. You know, beach that uh, yeah, you know, like yeah, to enjoy yeah. the beach. But unfortunately, yeah. yeah that I hope uh, they can solve that uh, successfully this time. You mean the shutdown uh, of COVID? It's long. 
Yeah, hi, COVID uh, hi, is, uh, yeah, is, yeah, hi, causing a bigger problem for the tourists. I just hi, read uh, news on, today. Yeah. Red news say like the CN news say like all the people stuck there, <laughs> thousands of them. They could they stuck there, the tourists. Yeah. 80,000 tourists in uh, Hainan. Uh, I hope uh, they can deal it uh, better. It's a long experience in Shanghai. <laughs> so uh, I, I just come back from Yinchuan. I was uh, oh. uh, having a vacation for a few days, a couple of days, uh, the desert side. So, so luckily I didn't went to, uh, I didn't go to uh, uh, Sanya for vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it can get stuck. Um, how's everything uh, going? It's long. Yeah, it's nice. So I got I come back from a short, short uh, vacation, mm -hmm. which has been uh, like canceled last year. Finally, I made it this year. So, uh, it's a big start to uh, processing a lot of work. Yeah, I'm um, oh. in a Gordon conference in Spain. Oh yeah, so I, it's dark. Uh -huh. So Spain, okay. Yeah, you come back yeah. to Europe again. Yeah. Start to another round of uh, a trip around the world in yeah eight days maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be back to well, Shanghai in a few weeks. Oh, so I'm okay. trying to get in as much travel as possible. Sure. So so where is it, Spain? In Barcelona. Oh, Barcelona. Great. Great. Yeah, Sweet. I heard that the Gaudi building was completed, isn't it? I don't think it's ever completed, right? They've been no, doing it for hundreds of still years. Still not. <laughs> okay, but they had a some ceremony. I, I uh, thought. Yeah, uh, something. Yeah. 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 So Zilong, I heard that you are also doing conversion now. So no, I didn't. No, no, no. No. Oh, oh no, I somebody. Uh, I mean, uh, interested uh, by the information. Know. <laughs> yeah, it was it was uh it was ages ago. So one friend of mine in Tongji, so Zheng Liang working for stem cell, you know. So one time he, he told me he told me some kind of gene I forgot the name. It was about eight years ago, maybe. So I I tried a few times. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so but yeah, so, so I, I realized I I didn't really understand the uh, how, how how the stem cell worked. You have to stand a lot of markers or whatever. Yeah, and and and. It, I just quit that field and start and uh, continue my uh, start working on autism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's a stem cell expert in Tongji, so uh, they are pretty much interested. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. It, it's midnight in Spain, is it? Um, it's two. Oh, so it's yeah. Midnight. It's a six hours <laughs> difference from China. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. Is that kind of with 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 with, 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 with Germany? Um, uh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Maybe it's supposed to be yeah. far maybe. away, right? Oh, no. Yeah. Europe isn't that. Large, actually. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the connections. Okay. Yeah. So if my internet's not so stable, Zong, you might have to take control. But um, so far, so good. No problem. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, I should come back on September 9th. Nice. Okay. So like one more month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's still, it'll be still hot. It's still a lot of uh, crayfish. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Shalong Sha. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, E. 
，阿姨。Hi, hi, sorry, hi guys, yeah, I'm mute. I felt like I just saw you last week or two weeks ago. It seems. Oh yeah. So are you back? Are you still in California or you're back in Shanghai? I'm in Spain, Barcelona. Oh, nice! <laughs> yeah. Traveling around the world. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I have th- like one more month of freedom, so I'm getting as much travel as possible. <laughs> That's great. You guys starting, Hi, Hi, John. Yeah, yeah. See you. Um, great. Okay, yeah, we can get started. So, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to. Another week of NeuroZoom、uh, broadcasting from Barcelona, Spain. Today, happy to see everyone.、Um, before we get started with the talks,、uh, advertise the talks next week. We have Sean Meltzer, postdoc at Harvard Medical School, and、uh, Dami, assistant professor at Tsinghua University. Please tune in.、Um, check out the website. Lots of great talks coming in the fall. If you want to present your work,、um, uh, let let me and Zalong know. You can be a postdoc student. Everyone's welcome to present.、Um, everyone's welcome to attend. Okay, so now let me、uh, get started with introducing our first speaker today,、um, Dr. Xianhua Piao. She's a physician scientist at、uh, UCSF.、Um, she is the、um, director of the Newborn Brain Research Institute, and she's the、um, Benioff Professor in Children's Health at UCSF.、Um, sh- her focus is on uh, childhood uh, uh, brain de- developmental brain disorders. She uh, uh, did a medical degree at、uh, in Xi'an at Fourth Military Medical University, then did a master's degree in Beijing, PhD in Toronto, and then did、uh, clinical training in uh, first um, internship at Yale and a residency, pediatric residency at NYU. But then did a lot of clinical training in neonatology, etc., at Harvard, and then did a postdoctoral fellowship with、uh, Chris Walsh at.、Um, At Harvard Medical School, and here during her postdoc, she had this famous paper in、uh, Science where、uh, she builds on a discovery that she made of a new t-、uh, autosomal recessive、uh, disease, a brain malformation disease. She named it、um, BFPP. I'm sure she might tell us about it. And、um, then she cloned the gene responsible for it. And、um, you know, in so doing, she sort of this discovery of the gene was good in and of itself, but also led to a mechanistic understanding. Of how the brain and the cerebral cortex is、uh, divided into different functional components. So she's uh, truly uh, be- uh, bench to bedside, actually bedside to bench, and hopefully back to bedside because she、um, gets patients that she sees clinically, and then she、um, discovers the genes that are mutated in these kids, and that teaches her about brain development. So really looking forward to hearing the latest,、uh, Xianhua. Thank you, Erin, for the wonderful introduction, and also thank you for giving me this opportunity. And thanks everybody to zoom in.、Um, so today, actually, I'm not going to talk too much of a patient about、uh, a clinical aspect, but more、um, in the development. So talking about microglia,、uh, microglia, as most of you know, are tissue resident macrophage in the brain, most largely、uh, derived from yolk sac. And、uh, in the mouse brain, uh, the uh, the myeloid progenitor cells enter the developing brain around embryonic day nine point five, and then they proliferate and and、uh, migrate to cover the entire cortex, as shown here from、uh, the papers Guazzoni and and in、uh, Sonia Grill's lab, this beautiful image of a CX three CR one. Uh, EGFP mice, all the green cells are showing are、uh, microglia. You can see they distributed, but the CX3CR1 also expressing macrophage. But in the brain parenchyma, they are microglia, and to cover the cortex and uh, uh, ganglion eminence and other brain region as well. So the focus of today is really ganglion eminence. Uh, I'm mostly focus on pavel albumin, also called PV interneurons. As we we know,、um, the PV interneurons are largely derived from media ganglion eminence (MGE) and populate the cerebral cortex. Deficit in PV interneurons leads to various neurodevelopmental disorders, including schizophrenia, autism spectrum disorders, and epilepsy. 
Our recent public from a talent postdoctoral fellow, Dr. Dian Kun Yu, um, showing that in normal uh, mouse brain ganglia uh, MGE, uh, microglia express highly this uh, protein Aaron just mentioned is what well, my early discovery is an adhesion G protein copper receptor called the GPR56. This receptor defines true microglia because only uh, yolk cell derived microglia are GPR56 positive. All the other macrophage um, uh, are GPR56 negative. So we show that this is a receptor is crucial for microglia to talk to uh, interneurons. Here is NKX 2.1 positive for gender cells, tell the cells to proliferate and generate a sufficient number of uh, PV interneurons that distribute into the somatosensory cortex. So in a normal brain, you have a normal density of a PV interneurons. So the mice have a normal social behavior. That means in this cartoon showing our behavior testing, the mice prefer um, animals like another mice and uh, spend more time here than this animated block. However, in the setting of a maternal immune activation, um, here is really the work of beautifully done by Jun Ha and, uh, and his collaborator, Victoria uh, Chow. They're showing that this uh, poly IC is double strand RNA mimic uh, viral infection, can induce work through the Th17 cells and the secret L17A, they cross the, the fetal brain, cause this derangement of a behavior and the interneuron uh, density. But what Dian Kun is really mapped down to is the molecular target is RGPR56 and the cellular target is a microglia in the fetal brain. So the L17 downregulate the microglial GPR56 and then our conditional deletion of GPR56 in microglia mimic this MIA uh, offspring brain. In that the microglia has a simplified morphology and produce abundant TNF alpha. This inhibit uh, NHX 2.1 proliferation. The end result is the reduced density of a PV interneuron in the somatosensor cortex. And the mouse has uh, uh, autistic-like behavior. Uh, here, as is shown, uh, the mice is uh, in description, uh, can spend equal amount of time either with mice or an animated block. So this is published work. I'm not going to go in detail. So today I will spend the time to talk about our unpublished work to address the question, how do microglia regulate the human interneuron development? So the, what do we want to do with first is what we want to perform a single nuclear RNA-seq. So here is like a little snapshot of a beautiful paper from Dr. Paredes in Science 2016. Uh, this is when she was a postdoc in Arturo Avaras Boya's lab and showing that in human brain, this interneurons, the migrator has this unique fashion here called arc. There is a dense uh, like uh, in the, anterior horn of the lateral ventricle, then they disperse into the cortex. So this migration lasts up to eight months of postnatal age uh, for full-term infant. So we got the sample, we got the cortex and also periventricular region, which it contained GE and the ARC. So we total get four individual samples. They are uh, three weeks, two weeks, 16 weeks of full-term uh, neonates. This is post-mortem brain, or one just uh, shortly after birth of a premature babies, uh, 30 weeks, uh, two days. And uh, three of them, we also got cortex. So we have four paraventricular region and three cortex. As you, many of you know, uh, you have, if you have done a red uh, single cell or single nuclear RNA-seq, the single nuclear RNA-seq of the brain, the neurons are predominant uh, overrepresented. And on the other hand, glial cells are underrepresented. Since we are interested in studying glial mechanism of interneuron development, so we adapted this fact sorting method from uh, published from Chris Glass group. 
So what we did is each brain specimen, we did four different process. One is DABI positive, is unreached total nuclei. Or we use PO.1 uh, positive, which is select specific selective microglial nuclei, or oligo-2 for oligo-lineage uh, enrichment. For astrocytes, we use LHX2, so new and negative LHX2 are positive. This is the least effective antibody. So nonetheless, we got a good representation. As you can see here in the U map, we totally uh, can distinguish 11 distinct cell clusters. And then, uh, we are very happy to see that um, the glial cells are very well represented here. As you can see, microglia, astrocytes, and a different stage of oligodendrocyte lineage. So this is a breakdown of percentage. Normally, if you only just do total single nuclear RSA from literature, the microglia roughly about two to five percent. It depends which protocol you use. Here we got twenty percent of total nucleic I on microglia. So our first, uh, we want to study how glia regulate uh, interneuron development. So we use this uh, R uh, program uh, called the Cell Chat. It was published in, uh, in 2021 in Nature of Communication. So the, the, the principle is if we want to study how microglia talks to interneurons, so the microglia will be the cells we want to see the ligand produced by microglia, and the receptor will be produced by, uh, expressed by interneuron. So we did that, and the, here is the heat map. So this is the 11 different uh, cell uh, clusters, each of them talking to only to interneuron. So the bottom was showing uh, the microglia talking to interneuron. As you can see, many of these pathways are shared by the different lineages. However, very interestingly, microglia has a large chunk of this very unique uh, pathways only microglia possess and then to communicate with the interneuron. So this is the zoom in of this microglia. This lists all the different pathway from the most uh, highest uh, possibility to lowest, but this is all statistically significant pathway. As you can see, the, the highest pathway is in, uh, in uh, insulin, uh, like a uh, growth factor one, IGF one and IGF one R, and this, the the next one is SPP one, two integrins, and so on and so forth. So we want to uh, first to confirm indeed that IGF one are expressed in the human microglia. Here is the thirty weeks gestational age of postmortem human brain. We did the double staining of IBA one and IGF one. As you can see, this is a zoom in image. Indeed, the microglia express IGF-1. And then we did the pseudo analysis of the, of the, the RNA uh, in this interneuron. So the left problem is showing the CGE interneuron and the right is uh, MG interneuron. And the, the peak is showing the red is the KI-67 is the proliferating cells. So the cells in proliferating will be young, young neurons just newborn a neuron or progenitor cell. As you can see, the IGF-1R mostly expressed in the progenitor cells and proliferating cells. So we want to study how, how what's the function of the IGF-1? We cannot manipulate the human brain, a live living being. So what we did is we adapt this organoid methodology. We use the protocol published by Sergey Pasca and the natural protocol. So we generate the ventral uh, organoid. As you can see, to first to show we indeed establish the, the, the model properly. And, and here is a summary of the MG development in human. As you can see, the different transcription factor express a different time point. NKX 2.1, mostly in the progenitor cells and radioglia. On the other hand, LH6 is expressed in late uh, intermediate progenitor cells and mostly is MGE-derived neurons. Here you can show the image. We did a various uh, double, triple immunostaining. 
The first is the five weeks old organoid. We did NKX 2.1 and SOX2 double immunostaining. The proliferating zone is represented the uh, ventricular zone is called ROSA. As you can see, they mostly are SOX2 positive radioclear cells. And in the outer um, ventricular zone, um, of the become NKX 2.1, the green cells. Now, if we look at eight weeks old, and this is the one mostly expressed in the intermediate progenitor cells, ASCL1, here is green. Um, the green is LH6, ASCL1 is red. As you can see, by eight weeks old, we see a lot of LH6 and also ASCL1. So the final product is 16 weeks. The MG gave rise to mainly two types of uh, interneurons. One is somatostatin, here's SST, and then we indeed see it in 16 weeks old organoid, we see this SST positive cells. And another type is a PV, and here you saw the red positive neurons. After establishing like this, because we want to study microglial mechanism, so we adapt this uh, uh, model we call neuroimmune organoid. This is a collaboration with um, uh, Tomino Akosis lab. The protocol was published in cell stem cell uh, last year. So a brief, briefly, first we introduced separately uh, this ventral organoid. And then in parallel, we induced uh, from human FTIC cells induced to IMG, uh, induced microglia. This is a protocol we adapted from uh, Matthew Blurton Jones uh, protocol. And at the four weeks old organoid, we transplant this IMG into the organoid and let them gather. As you can see here, this is two weeks after transplantation. So the organoid is six weeks old. You can see all the grains are IBA1 positive microglia, and then they really start to ramify. This is zoom in microglia. So now we ask question whether this uh, organoid can, neuroimmune organoid can serve our purpose. So the first way we look at it is whether this IMG is express IGF-1. Indeed, we did a double immunostaining IBA1 and IGF-1. As you can see, most of this IBA1 positive green cells are also red, I mean they express IGF-1. We also um, uh, simultaneously perform the single cell RNA sequencing. Here is the UMAP. Uh, as you can see, the AF1 is the marker for microglia, and this is small little cluster uh, microglia. And you can see here is IGF1, are only expressed in the microglia in this, uh, and it seems not every single microglia, but um, many of them are IGF-1 positive. So here is the experimental scheme. What we did is, so the first that you're showing this um, uh, neuroimmune organoid, and we transplanted four weeks later grown in for two more weeks. So in the last two days of these two weeks, we provide different treatment, like three different. One is just PPS, which is a carrier solution, or IGF-1, or IGF-1 neutralizing antibody. We treat them for 48 hours. So the last four hours of this 48 hour treatment that we pulse the cell, the new uh, organoid with BRDU. We want to first evaluate the proliferation. As you can see here, uh, this is a PBS control. As you can see, the left organoid are uh, without the microglia and the right is with the microglia. Microglia here, right, uh, is in uh, white. And the BRDU labeled are green and NKS 2.1 are red cells. In the absence of microglia, we see some BRDU positive and then some, most of them are NKX 2.1 positive as well. And you can see um, in the presence of a, a microglia, there are lots more rosette, and then many of the rosette have a lots of a BRDO positivity. So next is we treat with uh, IGF-1. So this is in the presence of IGF-1. At first, I want to draw your attention to this left organoid that's without 
microglia. And if you recall earlier, without microglia, we see very little um, a BRDO positive cells. And here you see a lot, and you really start to see very big and nice rosettes. Interestingly, when in the presence of a microglia, addition of IGF-1 didn't change too much. Um, so there seems in the comparable uh, uh, to the left organoid now. So the third experiment what we did is um, uh, we use the neutralizing antibody. So again, here is the left is the organoid without the microglia, right is the organoid with the microglia. So we know without the microglia with very little uh, BRDO positivity. But uh, if you recall, when we uh, add um, microglia, we see a lot of grain. However, when we in the presence of IGF-1 uh, neutralizing antibody, we hardly see any uh, proliferating um, cells. And here, just to recap what I've shown you, and this is the image of, but here is the statistical quantification. As you can see here, when we just in the presence of PBS, the microglia significantly um, promote the, the cell proliferation. However, the, this additional IGF-1 does not have a further effect. In other words, with, with, when we have a microglia, with or without microglia, this, there is no difference. But however, this, both of them are significantly higher than the PBS without microglia. And lastly is the with neutralizing IGF-1 antibody, uh, we can see are uh, significantly reduced. So this is just a, um, a quick uh, um, summary of what have we done. It's, uh, it's uh, still in the early stage of, uh, of our study. There is so many unanswered questions. For example, first, like I mentioned, we are also our recent publication that's in the mouse model. We definitively demonstrated how um, motor immune activation uh, elevated the IL-17A and then down-regular microglia with GPAR-56, which in turn produced TNFR5 inhibit MGE proliferation. So how about what is the maternal immune activation effect on the IGF-1 positive microglia? The next uh, question could be, not all IGF, uh, microglia are IGF-1 positive. Um, so are there, um, are there like a, a spatial distribution of IGF-1? But there's another question flashed in here is, what are the functions of what other pathways we identified in the study? Like I showed, I can just bring you back again, the earlier slides. And I think we particularly interesting is how about SPP-1 uh, integrin pathway? There is some other interesting pathway as well. So with that, uh, I will want to thank the people who have done the work. So there's many people contributed, but uh, mostly for the work I present today are the three uh, talented postdoc fellows. One is Dian Guen Yu and Samhita Jin, who is the neonatology in training. She particularly interested in the maternal immune activation and how that uh, negatively impacts the uh, brain development. And Andy Wangzhou, who is a bioinformatic person who did all the analysis of RA-seq. With that, this is my new lab uh, at UCSF, and this is a funding source and the collaborators. I specifically thank for this work, um, today presented work, uh, support uh, collaboration with Galina, Popova was a postdoc in Tom Novakowski's lab. With that, I would like to um, open this uh, paper for discussion. Thanks uh, so much, Xinhua. Awesome talk. I'm glad we were able to get you to California from Boston. And now we can open for questions. Hi, Xiaohua. I have a 
cute question for the IGF one signaling. So quite quite amazing how IGF one signaling regulates uh, microglia uh, on interneuron different. So, so what do you think in terms of the uh, intracellular uh, signaling pathway? Is something we already know regarding to the downstream of RGF one uh, receptors? Yeah, that is such a good question. You mean like when the, when the IGF uh, bind yeah, to IGF one yeah. yeah, receptor yeah, yeah. in the interneuron right, right, right. downstream signal? Right, yeah. Yeah, 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 well, we haven't tested. I would think many of these pathway do share uh, different cells, right? The IGF-1 uh, signaling in other cell types mm -hmm. is uh, mm -hmm. well documented. Yeah. So we haven't started looking at it, but there is several things we could look. That's okay. a um, well, we don't know Yeah, that. a few things you, you might already know. So in terms of the uh, subtype or uh, how, how the IGF-1 regulates overall maturation, or some differential particular uh, like cell surface uh, ion channels in terms of development of interneuron, do you know? I'm curious about uh, what, what aspect of the mature uh, yeah, idea for so a signal regulates. Yeah, we didn't look at the maturation or that. At this moment, mm -hmm. we only look at the proliferation. Okay, okay, okay. But do you know what sub sub subtype? I forgot, I might miss that. So you may have oh, lineage so of here is we yeah. only just look at it, the NKX two point one. So that okay, will okay, be okay. The, oh. the the MGE derived MGE progenitor yeah. cell. So which means that means for the still will produce all kinds of a PV SST, right? SST, oh. right. Yes. Yeah, there's all kinds of uh, well, interesting particular maybe development of probably. No, that's a good question. So I think uh, yeah. we we we're gonna grow the organoid lot for the four months old okay. that we can see um they will become either PV or SCT positive. So, so from sure. the mouse model, seems that all this uh, microglia interneuron talk is to affect uh, only uh, uh, PV, but it's interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. whether it's in affect the PV or also affect the SST. Very good great, question. Great. great, great, thanks. Wait, beautiful work, thanks. Thank you. I, I have a question. Junie, go ahead. Yes, um, uh, very interesting talk. I wonder if such kind of interaction between microglia and interneuron maintains in adult uh, brains, because I remember there was some um, proposal try to eliminate or kill all the microglia as a therapy uh, for neurodegenerative disease, because uh, microglia in neurodegeneration play a detrimental role. So your proposal is in development um, so I wonder whether such interaction still maintained to some degree in adult brain. Well, of course, the, the microglia, it seems everywhere, right? Touch everything and do everything. They definitely play a very, very crucial role for the brain homeostasis. And then definitely like you even alluded to uh, for neurodegeneration. Um, we don't know specifically this pathway like IGF-1, IGF-1R, uh, whether these remain and continue to adulthood. Uh, I'm not so certain, especially if we see mostly for proliferation for interneuron. In adulthood, I don't think there is much proliferation anymore. So but the IGF so. could still play the role. That's true. Maybe different kind of role, right? Mm. Maybe yeah. also different different type of neuron instead of interneuron. Mm. Okay, thank you. So there are other questions. Li Zhu. Yeah. Oh, you muted. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Um. Thank you for a nice talk. Uh, I'm interested in the microglia transplantation. I just curious about is um will the ratio of the microglia correlate with the proliferation of the interneuron? Is there any dosage dependent effect of the microglia? Yeah, no, no, that's a very good question. So at this point, we didn't we didn't <clears throat> do a very detailed study to quantify, but uh. Seems you do, we do not need a lot of because at the beginning we transplant and the, the microglia is sparse, but even that we see a big difference. But really, like, what's, what's the maximum effect? Uh, so we, we have not evaluated that yet. Okay, thank you. But that's a good question. Okay, thanks. Be great. And um, 
Xianhua, awesome talk. Thanks so much. Um, now we're up for um, Gong and Zilong. Take it away. Okay. 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 Uh, thanks, Xianhua, for great talks. Now the second speaker is the uh, Professor uh, Gong Chen. Now he's from Jinan University in China, Guangzhou. So before uh, Jinan, so Gong was uh, was a, a tenure professor in the uh, um, Penn State University. So uh, Gong has got his uh, bachelor's degree from Fudan University, in Shanghai. After bachelor's degree, he went to uh, Institute of Physiology uh, in Chinese Academy of Sciences, where is the same campus I, I'm in right now. So after a PhD with uh, Professor Song uh, Dopei, uh, he went to the States, so did a, a two postdoc in Yale and Stanford. Uh, in Stanford, uh, Gong worked with Dick Chen. So after uh, after uh, postdoc in, uh, with, with Dick Chen's lab, and he went to uh, Penn State to start his own lab in, uh, in uh, working on synaptic physiology, actually. So I believe we we're, uh, going to talk about it. So it was, um, it was a, uh, Gong has this uh, sabbatical in uh, Rusty Gage's lab uh, quite a while ago, where Gong realized that uh, using apply the electrophysiology method to study how the cell differentiation uh, back then was still how trans differentiation uh, from a different lineage were be quite interesting topic. We're going to start it to uh, start it to combine molecular genetic and as well as the physiological tools to study how the, uh, uh, the molecular mechanism underlying uh, uh, neuroglia trans differentiation, uh, where they make a series of uh, discovery, uh, which is uh, how the neuro D1 is implicated in the um, actual astrocyte and neuron uh, phase transition. Okay. So the topic is big, uh, this is lasting for decades. So it's very interest, interesting insight to uh, to not only as the uh, basic science as well as the uh, translational uh, practitioners. So uh, after Penn State, uh, so Gong has uh, transferred his or uh, uh, himself to a whole uh, totally in, uh, from states to China in China University, where he uh, continues on uh, uh, gastrocyte uh, neuron transdifferentiation. Differentiation. So, uh, uh, and hopefully, to apply this new technology to clinical side. Now, so today, uh, going to talk about the uh, 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 along this topic, enhancing neurodivine expression to convert a lineage uh, traced exocyte uh, into neurons. Hey, Gong, uh, we we can we couldn't see you. We we'll, we'll see your slides. Oh, so yeah, yeah, you can see slide. Cannot see yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Now, now we can. Okay. All right. Yeah. They take that, uh, take it away. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks to uh, Arang and Zilong for organizing uh, this uh, symposium. Um, so today, um, I will uh, give only one single uh, uh, topic. Let me see. Yes. Um, so I'll focus in on one question. Can neuro D1 convert astrocytes into neurons? So today I'm not going to talk about PDBP1. I'm not going to talk about the microglia. So why we want to convert astrocyte into neurons? As Zilong said, I actually initially was trying to inject the stem cells and collaborating with a rusty gauge, but the found it wasn't very successful. So then, <clears throat> since I was studying neuroscience since my food undergraduate undergraduate study. Uh, we know a lot of uh, glial cells surrounding neurons and astrocyte are my uh, favorite. But neurons cannot divide after injury neurons die, but the astrocyte would proliferate and the astrocyte can replenish themselves. They can form glial scar. And our human brain has 86 billion neurons. For neuro injury or disease, if 1% of neuronal loss, that is 860 million neuron loss. So my question is how can we regenerate millions, if not billions of neurons in human brain to treat a variety of neurological disorders? So many labs over the past decade, uh, they have repeatedly demonstrated astrocyte to neuron conversion using a variety of neurotranscription factors. So I'm not going to, uh, uh, to uh, name all of them, but I did a list of some of them, including neuro D1. So basically every lab found that neurotranscription factor expressed in astrocyte or in other cells, uh, NG2 cells, for example, 
uh, they would change the transcriptome from a glial transcriptome to neuronal transcriptome and change glial cells first to immature neurons and then mature neurons. However, everybody knows that uh, many labs also reported neuro D1 since our first uh, paper published in 2013, December 19th, that neuro D1 can convert astrocyte into neurons, neuro D1 can convert NG2 cells into neurons, but neuro D1 cannot convert microglia into neurons. Thanks to Peng Bo who confirmed that study. I was surprised <laughs> by the uh, neuron paper earlier said that they can convert the microglia. You know, we show that uh, uh, they cannot. But what it was really interesting, my old friend Chen Li last year published a paper, uh, not only a paper, but also in cell, had such a, you know, disturb the field that they cannot convert astrocyte into neurons using neuro D1. So we did a you know, simple count of the past decade. There are 19 uh, papers published. You know, they can convert, use neuro D1, convert astrocyte into neurons. And of course, including many of our own work, but many other labs repeatedly demonstrated that. So is that we all wrong? And only Chen Li is right that he failed to convert? So let's see what really went wrong with that cell paper. So I already wrote a comment and point out, you know, they have two major flaws in that cell paper. One, they used a very high titer, AAV causing very high neuronal leakage. Second, they failed to use enhancer to increase neuro D1 expression in order to convert those lineage traced astrocyte. So, here we show why the titer is important. We use the three different AAV vectors, all express GFP alone, only GFP, right? No neuro D1 involved. It doesn't matter what the transcription factor. And when we use different titer, 10 to the 11th power or 10 to the 12th or 10 to the 13th, uh, GC gene copy uh, per ML. No matter what AV vector you use, once you hit that high titer, 10 to the 13th, I said that's the seeding you shouldn't touch. You will see the GFP is going to leak into neurons in a massive way, 50 to 60%. So my recommendation to the whole field don't use that high AAV title, 10 to the 13th. We will have another paper come out sometime, if not this year, but next year. That high titer causes a, a lot of damage to brain tissue. So my recommendation to the whole field is to use 10 to the 11 to 10 to the 12 GC per ml, that uh, kind of moderate titer. So somebody said, well, they have a fancy idea. Neuro D1 expression in neurons might cause the neuronal leakage, really. Is that so? We did the experiment. We purposely expressed Neuro D1 in neurons using synapsing promoter. Drive synapsing Neuro D1 GFP, and then we co-inject GFAP TD tomato. Now, if neurons express neuro D1 and the neuro D1 would activate the GFAP promoter in neurons, then you would see massive expression of TD tomato in neurons. The truth is the opposite. Neuro D1 expression in uh, neurons on the synapsing promoter, they do not cause GFAP promoter activation. It's minimal. You can see the quanti quantified data in F. It's less than 10% of the neurons would express that TD tomato. So neuro D1 itself does not cause leakage. Neuro D1 itself does not activate GFAP promoter. So does neuro D1 really matters, you know, using what viral vectors? It doesn't. 
whether you use a retrovirus to express neural D1, whether you use AAV to express neural D1, whether you use lentivirus to express neural D1, they can all convert astrocyte into neurons, no problem. So it's not any virus dependent. What it is dependent is the neural D1 dose. We use GFAP, GFP to label astrocyte, okay? So essentially, the GFAP, GFP, AAV infected astrocyte with express GFP, simple. Then you add a different dose of neural D1. What we see when you add more neural D1, then those GFAP, GFP labeled astrocyte will gradually be converted into neurons. The more neural D1 you add, the more neurons being converted. And somebody has a fancy idea. So, well, your neural D1 is competing the GFP, you cause the GFP uh, signal lose. It doesn't. So we did this experiment. We use GFAP, GFP to label the astrocyte as green. And then we add a neural D1, or we add a flipped neural D1. The flipped neural D1 cannot convert astrocyte into neurons. But the GFAP, GFP is always there. The infect astrocyte is beautiful, as shown in this bottom uh, uh, row in panel B. And we have quantified the data showing that neural D1 can successfully convert astrocyte, those GFAP, GFP labeled astrocyte into neurons. But the flipped neural D1 cannot convert astrocyte into neuron. And those astrocytes express GFP no problem. It cannot be competed by those flipped neural D1. So importantly, uh, almost 10 years ago now, we show that the astrocyte conversion to neuron induced by neural D1 is a direct transdifferentiation. There is no neural stem cell stage. We don't find a SOX2, no nesting, no other uh, stem cell marker. It is a direct trans differentiation. And we have shown repeatedly there is an intermediate state in between astrocyte and the neurons. It is a must be a stage, right? We'll convert astrocyte into neurons. They gotta have some intermediate state. What we show here is that one astrocyte converting to neurons, this is Jia Jun Zhen's uh, paper published last year, that we can see a lot of those neural D1 expressing astrocyte. They have not lose astrocytic markers such as the SOX9, such as the GFAP, but in the meanwhile, they already acquired a neuronal marker such as NeoAIM. And such coexistence, of neuronal marker and astrocytic marker, they were very, very rare in our brain, in normal state. This is only happening in the early stage during astrocyte to neuron conversion. So now comes to this critical evidence. Everybody said, oh, Dr. Chen, you should do this lineage traced uh, system, you know, showing lineage traced astrocyte. We did it. Can we use this ALDH1 CREAT2 mice cross with AI14, give tamoxifen, and all these TD tomato labeled cells under normal condition, they are astrocyte. No doubt they're GFAP positive. You know, you see this top row A and C. The TD tomato label astrocyte, perfect. Now we inject a neural D1. And the difference between us and the Chun Li and Beverly Davidson and perhaps many others, is we used an enhancer. We initially also see weak promoter couldn't convert those TD tomato labeled astrocyte, but we quickly design our vector using enhancer, enhanced neural D1 expression, and we can successfully convert those TD tomato labeled astrocyte into TD tomato labeled neurons. Now, in those TD tomato labeled neurons, there's no astrocyte there. Very clear, lineage traced astrocyte can be converted into neurons after you enhance neural D1 expression. Hey, Gong, I have so a quick question. Somebody, oh, sorry. somebody hey, start to. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I have a quick question. Come, come back to last slide. So, where did you put the enhancer in the, in the neural D1 expression vector? Yes. Vector? 
Of course. So how, uh, no, how no, Cree. Do that? So, no, Cree, no, Cree. no, no, no. This is GFAP. So here show you GFAP promoter and CME enhancer together drive neural device expression. No, Cree, okay. But wait a minute. I, I saw you. What, what you should do is the uh, you put in a Cree dependent in your D one. No, Cree. to the. Yeah, yeah, but, but so I, long, I saw. So long. Let's stop here. No Cree. This is a GFAP promoter driven neural D1. Okay. Okay, I got it. But my point yeah. is what you should do, everybody was asking about is what you do here is you should inject the AV Cree dependent LD1 into the LDH1 L1. Don't Cree tell me ART2. what to do, Zilong. Right? Don't tell me you what should, to do. Now, now you can prove you, you inject the no. your device into the glia and you in transfer into neural, right? No, 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 that's wrong. This Let, is that's the all GFAP right promoter directly I driven understand. neural D1. Yeah, yeah, I understand what you, what you say. Let's, but, uh, I, let's I discuss to... afterwards, Zilo. Okay, okay, let's sure, sure. Let's discuss sure. afterwards, okay? This is the GFAP driven neural D1, directly express neural D1 in the astral side, convert the lineage trace astral side into neurons, okay? Let's see control. I, I got it. Okay, go, Let's go ahead. do the GFAP GFP control experiment. Okay. GFAP GFP without the neural D1. In this lineage traced astrocyte, they of course infect the astrocyte. That's true. But there's one strange thing happening. When we express GFAP GFP in the TD tomato labeled astrocyte at 30 days, at the 90 days, we see a very strange phenomenon. Many TD tomato labeled astrocyte lose GFP. Isn't that bizarre? Normally, we always see GFAP, GFP infected astrocyte. In normal mice, wild high mice, they would <clears throat> continually express GFP. But in this lineage traced astrocyte, <clears throat> they lose GFP. What the hell is happening here? I think we need to fully understand this lineage traced astrocyte before anybody tried to set a golden standard here. So many people even didn't fully understand this lineage traced astrocyte in conversion context and start to jump into a conclusion that is wrong, okay? So we that, of course, used to photon live imaging, seeing is believing. So you can see when we use GFAP, GFP to infect those astrocytes, and this astrocyte, GFP labeled astrocyte, they would stay the same area, express GFP, you know, you can say forever, you know, five days, 30 days, 45 days, you know, even several months. They always GFP expressing there. Unlike what I just show you, those TD tomato labeled lineage traced astrocyte, they would lose GFP. I don't know what's happening for those. But the real interesting thing is once you introduce neural D1 into those GFAP, GFP labeled astrocyte, you would see those astrocyte would gradually convert into neurons. And by 20 days, three weeks, they even show dendritic spines. They not only have this long apical dendrite. Even more interestingly, for those newly generated neurons, they would grow out the dynamic growth cones, means those newly generated neurons, they are exploring their environment. They try to see where to go, okay? So, of course, we use two photon microscope also looking to this lineage traced astrocyte. Okay, this is just the lineage traced astrocyte. We use the neural D1 enhancer. We infect those astrocytes with neural D1. Then you look under two photon microscope. 15 days, most of those TD tomato astrocytes, while expressing neural D1, they remain astrocyte. A few of them start to change their morphology. They start to shrink their process, of course, 20 days, 25 days, 30 days, 35 days. And you can see this is the same field. You see the astrocyte gradually changing to neurons. This is a lineage traced astrocyte under two photon microscope after expressing neural D1. 
And I'm going to show you again, zoom in and see this uh, movie. So you can see this 15 days expressing neuro D1, they are ultrasound. But 20 days later, this group of astrocytes gradually changing to neurons. This is lineage traced astrocyte, TD tomato labeled astrocyte under two photon microscope, gradually changed into TD tomato labeled neurons with very clear optical dendrite and showing clear neuronal morphology. If we do post fixed standing and they have new aim. So, lineage traced astrocyte after enhancing neuro D1 expressing, they can be converted into neurons. And of course, we also not only did a mouse astrocyte in vivo, we also did a human astrocyte in vitro. This is published a long time ago. <clears throat> this is a pure astrocyte culture, no neurons. When you're introducing neuro D1, you can also convert them into neurons and it's time dependent. So what is the molecular mechanism behind this neuro D1 induced astrocyte conversion? We published earlier this year, we first did the cultured human astrocyte bulk RNA sick. And when you express neuro D1, you will see the glial genes gradually silence, neuronal genes gradually increased. It all happens in two weeks. So the neuro D1 would change the astrocyte transcriptome into neuronal transcriptome. So it's completely changing astrocyte into neurons. <coughs> now, in vivo, single cell RNA sick, everybody is asking. Yes, we have been doing that. And you will see that after neuro D1 expressing in those single astrocyte, we see exactly the same thing as RNA seq they should, right? The GFAP gene reduced AQP4, SOX9, the glial genes, the specifically astrocyte genes are downregulated. And the neuronal genes like uh, new NRB, FOX3, you know, beta 3 tubulin, they all increase, essentially recapitulate what we have already known using a, a, a bulk RNA seq. So to really summarize, the astrocyte to neuron conversion is actually pretty straightforward. You first need to detect your transcription factors such as neuro D1 in astrocyte. <clears throat> they express in those astrocytic nucleus. They're not going to just jump into neuronal nucleus unless the astrocyte will change into neurons. Then you will see the astrocyte have morphological change. They really, uh, you know, start to lose the fine process. They start to, you know, have a long optical dendrite. They start to lose astrocytic marker like a GFAP, like SOX9. They then go to an intermediate state, as I shown you. They can be both GFAP positive, new in positive, or they can be GFAP negative or new in negative. They enter in mature neuronal state, and then they go to mature neuronal state. It's very simple, you can see that. So today, my take home message, astrocyte can be converted into neurons. More specifically, when you enhance neuro D1, you can convert those lineage traced astrocyte into neurons. And neuronal leakage, it can be controlled in low level by using low titer virus, whether it's AAV or it's lentivirus. With that, I would like to thank and take uh, uh, questions. Thank you. Okay, thanks Gong. Now uh, open for questions. So uh, you, you can uh, arm yourself. Shuin, do you want to ask questions? Hello, Shandong, I saw you. Uh, hi, I'm trying to ask a hi, question. Go, go ahead, yeah. Uh, uh, hi, thank you. Uh, uh, Gong. Uh, let me just ask uh, one question. So at the beginning, you mentioned uh, this uh, neuro D1 mediated uh, uh, to neuron conversion is independent of a virus used, i.e. retrovirus, antivirus, or AAV. Uh, 
but if uh, if we get a right, uh, ritual virus mediated, uh, uh, I mean targeting only targeted to dividing cells, uh, but an antivirus targeting both dividing and non-dividing cells. So it looks like uh, this, by using different virus, they targeting different population of adrocyte, maybe at a different stage. Can you please comment on that with regard to efficiency or uh, uh, I mean, the, or different cells? Yeah. yeah, Shandong, of course, you know, what I meant is that uh, neuro D1 conversion of astrocyte is irrelevant of what a virus you use, but actually when you use the virus itself, of course, the conversion efficiency could be different. The conversion time could be different. You know, of course, a different virus would you know have a you know many different profile. Yes, you are absolutely right. For example, <clears throat> why originally we use a, a retrovirus? You know, we try to avoid this you know uh, uh, complications. You know, whether you leak into neurons, right? Retrovirus, it doesn't have such a problem. But once we prove that. Now, if we really want to think, as I posed the question, you know, initially, if we want to regenerate 860 million neurons in human brain, you're not going to use the retrovirus. <laughs> Any single point you inject, you can only infect a very limited number of glial cells that are dividing. So that's not enough for patient. That's why we use AAV, right? And AAV really infect more uh, uh, astrocyte. Uh, uh, than the uh, retrovirus. So that's really for different purpose, you would use a different virus. But my point is whether you use, you know, different viral vector to deliver neuro D1, the neuro D1 can always convert astrocyte into neurons. All right. Uh, uh, another question I have, you and I have been discussed extensively uh, uh, in private settings, but I'm still puzzled by the mechanism behind this high titer virus induced uh, uh, toxicity or neuronal leakage. Uh, uh, explain that to me. So if you use a fixed uh, GFAP, say, okay, like a 10 to the 11th titer, and then coupled with uh, neuro D1 uh, flit, which uh, does uh, without any uh, creed, they don't uh, actually express. And then if you use that as a high titer, does that cause the neuronal leakage or not? We're talking well, about- Well, you don't a, need it. <clears throat> you don't what? need a, you know, a couple of that, right? You are GIP alone, we show in the beginning. If you're no, no, GIP alone, it's say... high, already leak, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I just say with uh, just a virus, high tidal virus without expressing anything, uh, do they cost your uh, GFAP? Uh, we did that one. We we didn't show here. We did. If you use, you know, a, a flip or some other doesn't express something. But as long as you hit, you know, high height at ten to the thirteen, you actually you damage neurons. You damage neurons. You damage astrocyte. Uh, you cause leakage. Yes. Okay. So uh, no, no, no. You damage a neuron, right? Because you da you yes. said a neuron yeah. get a damage. Neurons uh, got the damage. Get them, get yeah. You will see a paper following. Yes. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I'm you still, will see a paper following. I, I know. I know the paper, but I'm still puzzled by the mechanism. Why high title AAV? Well, uh, Shandong, damage. think about it. Our normal brain, you just inject the AAV into the brain and inject massively. You don't expect any bad thing happen, <laughs> right? No, no. People yeah. argue that yeah. from the uh, from the center of the injection site, virus were diffused. Uh, in uh, uh, 380, oh, yeah. uh, 360, uh, I mean, in all directions. So once diffused long in, uh, distance, long enough, and the ratio will change, and yeah. at least something, you, you will see a radiate that within the injection side, you got a more leakage than the peripheral side. Is that something you saw, or you don't believe that happened? Um, Shandong, so two things, one, 10 to the 13th, you know, title GC per ml, that's too much virus injected into our brain. It causes enough damage in pretty actually wide areas. Uh, second, virus diffusion in our brain is not a physical diffusion. It is biological diffusion. Those claim, oh, in this injection site, 
we go a few hundred micrometers, that must be very, very low titer. That's absolutely wrong, dead wrong. <laughs> you know, prove that, <laughs> that about, you know, 100 micrometer away or 200 micrometer away, the AAV titer very, very low, prove that. What do we see the AAV injecting into brain, it's a biological diffusion. It's not a pure physical diffusion. And we believe that we see this AAV uh, diffusion inside the brain, at least the first is uh, the blood vessel related, second, nerve fiber related, okay? So it does, is not a purely uh, a physical diffusion. I see. Okay, that is somebody else ask, but I'm, I'm, I say yeah, I, I love you. Thank you, Shandong. Yeah, yep. But I'm testing that ourselves, actually, different tighter as you recommended. Okay. Just convince yeah. ourselves that's indeed a reproducible I, phenomenon. <laughs> I suggest that everybody, in fact, in gene therapy field, it is must, you must try different dose. I mean, that's absolutely necessary. Okay. And don't inject too much AV into the brain. That's always my advice to everyone. Okay, hey, Shannon, I have quick uh, following comments. Actually, we we uh, we include us did a lot of AV brain in vivo injections. So I believe it, what matters is the quality of virus. And uh, what we inject about ten to thirteen is only like fifteen nanoliters. So we believe this fine. We never observe for the optogenetic tours or whatever or trading tours. So the 15 nanometer, nanoliter, a little mm -hmm. tiny amount of 10 to minus mm -hmm. 10 13, we didn't find any toxic effect related. So but so, but my suggestion to you is yeah. even 15 nanoliter, you cut yeah. that one, yeah. you do microglia uh, immunostanding. We, we See, did. I yeah, bet we did. you, well, microglia depends on when and how. I, I believe it was, you know, 15 nanoliter is probably tiny that, uh, uh, the damage may be small, but I bet you will find small damage there as well. Okay, well, we should uh, uh, that uh, that's good. So Hong Yan, you have a question? Oh uh, yeah, nice talk. I have two questions. Uh, the first is that which subtype of neurons uh, you are converting from exercise mm -hmm. to neuron? Do you need additional factors to generate different type of neurons? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes. So in cortex, we use neural D1 alone. We generate mostly cortical neurons. You know, they are TBR1 positive, CAX1 positive, uh, CTIP2 positive, you know, superficial layer, deep layer. But uh, for striatum, then we add DLX2 to generate the garbage neurons, you know, in spinal cord, then we use the spinal cord, you know, transcription factor to generate the motor neurons in the spinal cord. So Depends on in retina, we now doing retina. Uh, I saw Borton there, <laughs> and we do a retina neuro D1. You know, our other transcription factor, different transcription factor would convert the Mueller glia into different type of neurons. And uh, really, the critical thing is you want to figure out where the brain areas, our spinal cord, our retina, and what kind of neuron you want to regenerate, then you determine what the transcription factor to screen and pick the right combination of transcription factor. Great, so my second question is, can you convert on other, other type of differentiated cells outside of the CNS to neurons by overexpressing neural D1? Huh. I don't know. I only focusing on brain, spinal cord, or retina. That's making me busy enough. <laughs> But you can try. <laughs> I encourage everybody else to try. Okay, Bo. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, very, very interesting talk. Uh, and uh, good to know you are also uh, testing uh, neural D1 uh, uh, in the retina. And uh, we we work in the retina, uh, uh, reprogramming uh, video cells in the retina, and uh, we are trying to find. Uh, very prominent reprogramming factors, such as neural D1 uh, in reprogramming video cells in retina. Actually, we have tried a list of uh, 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 potent factors, including neural D1. And we use uh, GFAV, GFAP, driving the expression of uh, uh, these uh, reprogramming factors, uh, neural D1, ASK1, MAS5, neural gene into you limit. And, uh, and interestingly, uh, we found, uh, 
uh, in terms of leakage, uh, these different factors have different level of leakage. Uh, although, you know, we maintain the titer exactly the same uh, to control the titer, and the neural D1 seems to have the most massive leakage. Uh, and when we do the uh, AVGFP uh, neural D1, and we see a lot of uh, uh, inner neurons being, uh, being targeted, uh, including gagging cells uh, and amicron cells. Uh, so we try to, uh, because this could be a problem because when you see uh, this expression, uh, uh, expre expression is in the neurons, they actually, it's not, uh, it's kind of a shift. So the expression in glial cells, uh, you don't see much and you just see shift expression. Because if we wanna do reprogramming, we really wanna have this reprogramming factors being restricted in, in, in glial cells. And, uh, and so we try to, uh, improve uh, the AAV immediate tools to, for the glial cell reprogramming. Uh, and we tried, we actually tried different ways, uh, the old ways trying to uh, reduce the leakage, uh, including lower the titer. So if we lower- Tell me the question, tell me your question, Bo. How do you know if it is leaked neuron, not a converted neuron? How do you differentiate that the converted neuron versus the leaked neuron, how, tell me, how do you know it's leakage? It's not a conversion. Yeah, so uh, we can use, uh, because we cannot, so if this is direct conversion, uh, that is not uh, involving uh, cell proliferation. So basically the BRDU, uh, EDU, they cannot work, right? So if the direct conversion is uh, proliferation not involved. So we pre-labeled pre all the immuter cells uh, with glass, the ER, ERT2. Uh, these are- uh, uh, You labels. are again having the Crelox P recombination. And you are again uh, having and, uh, this uh, weird things like our LDH1 creatine 2 astrocyte. Is that right? Uh, yeah, so glass- Do you know they are behaving the same as normal Mueller glia? Did you uh, test that? Yeah, we did, we did. And uh, uh, we, we still uh, see those are uh, normal mutual cells that are processes. And we've done single cell RNA-seq. And it looks like uh, these mutual cells are largely maintained as, as their mutual uh, cells morphology-wise and transcriptome-wise. Do me uh, a favor, Bo. Do me yeah. a favor. Just express GFAP, GFAP in your the glass, the uh, ER, and uh, see whether the GFP is going to be lost in some of the Mueller glia, like what I have shown you here. Yeah. All right, so those Crelox we, we recombinated the glial cells, their properties changed. They are created for lineage tracing purpose. They are not created for converging purpose. So when we talk about conversion, you have to be careful, okay? So those CREER recombination is changing the glial properties. And I so far did 10 years, I have not been able to name one single marker that can tell you this is a leaked neuron. This is not a converted neuron. I cannot, okay? Leak the neuron and the converted neuron, they are so difficult to distinguish. Once you convert Mueller glia into neurons, they are not distinguishable from the pre-existing neurons. So. When we talk about a leakage, leakage is happening there, but what is leaked neuron? What is converted neuron? You have to have absolute evidence to say that is leaked neuron. That's pretty uh, difficult, okay? Uh, uh, let, let me, uh, Zilong, can I make a comment here? Sure, sure, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I think uh, the field need a strategy to simultaneously label endogenous atrocyte or, uh, and the neuron. Otherwise, uh, if you say you see one or two endogenous neuron, you extrapolate everything to yeah. endogenous neuron. That's not right. the correct. Nobody denied there is no uh, uh, leakage. I mean, everybody yes. saw some leakage. Absolutely. But I think uh, uh, we, we need to work harder and find a solution to this problem. That's number one. Uh, number two, I do worry about uh, tamoxifen induced lineage tracing system, which has been considered a gold standard. Gong, uh, Gong Chen want to uh, 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 emphasize uh, there's no gold standard. But anyway, I wouldn't go that far, but I feel we need to consider 
that the tamoxifen induced recombination uh, because uh, uh, the potential toxicity. This has been demonstrated since the beginning of a Krila system. Once you make a cleavage in the genome, even once, it will cause a uh, rapid DNA damage response that basically frozen the cell at a state that cannot be converted to anything. Uh, just stay there. Uh, and we currently don't know how long it takes for cell to recover and then reprogram. Uh, I think uh, Gong Chen provides some evidence for that, that in order to see that you need to uh, wait for somewhere between 60 days all the way to 130 days. Uh, but nobody determined what's the optimal days. So, so in the other word, most people monitor the conversion in one month. I do not believe one month is uh, is long enough to see any conversion. So in my mind, uh, doesn't matter you use a neural D1, SOX2 or anything else. If you can, if you claim you convert non-neuronal cell to neuron in one month, I think most likely it would be an artifact. Uh, that's my no, opinion. No, May not be no, 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 Shandong, you cannot make that arbitrary uh, 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 judgment. See our cell stem cell paper. <clears throat> when you use retrovirus neural D1, it actually can convert those astrocytes in one week into the new N positive neurons. Okay. So that's published, you know. So no, no, do, nobody do that in vitro. Say, <clears throat> because I never see anything in vivo. Can do that fast. In, in vivo. vivo. No, no, no. Maybe PDBP1 is not that fast. The neuro D1 can. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm but I'm not, I'm skeptical though. Yeah. All right. So, so, yeah, so we'll okay. move to the so, uh, yeah, yeah we, uh, I think we, moved uh, to we, we actually have done the experiment yeah, you, you 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 just talk about. Uh, so they just the express in uh, uh, GFP like GFAP GFP uh, in in those uh, uh, fate mapped uh, lineage trace in neural cells, uh, and uh, we 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 can just uh, see we don't see decreased expression at all. Uh, That's good. Show me the data. Yeah, all right. I, yeah, I can. I can. That's yeah, good. Can, Show me yeah. the data. Oh, uh, we actually how, have. A... How do you know the neuro D1 expression is not conversion? We are actually having a paper will be published soon. Neuro D1 do convert to Mueller glia. I don't know why. Again, you uh, cannot. We, we have we a can. we have a paper under revision right now. So. <laughs> That's a fine. So, yeah. So uh, neuro D1 will, is, is will be one of the soon. factors we tested. Uh, okay. Uh, the, the paper is uh, is developing AV tools, but we we pick. Uh, several prominent reprogramming factors, including neural That's a fine. That's yeah. a fine. And, and, I can uh, tell and, you and one I more a, thing. I have another evidence, uh, independent of uh, 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 of the Korean uh, depend uh, the, the linear tracing. Uh, we can pre-label the endogenous ganglion cells, amicron cells, with one color, and then we we see uh, the the this uh, uh, this leakage is actually pre-existing uh, already in the pre-existing old neurons. So we don't see uh, uh, indication of conversion. Or uh, leakage uh, is always all right. the question uh, is I think it's okay. Much... Yeah, just uh, okay. we should uh, debate the good, right? We, we just uh, yeah. kind of, uh, yeah, we, yes. when paper come out, we can set another discussion yeah. to, to further exactly. see, see what's uh, going. Yeah, okay. Chen, Chen Gong, uh, I have a question I haven't asked because I never done brain. So it's so, so fascinating about brain. Have you done experiments uh, like using neuro D1 GFP uh, with the uh, TD tomato linear tracing. So you have two color over that. That's an extra layer of uh, stringency. And then uh, those neurons supposed to convert in neurons, uh, you, uh, you monitor them with live imaging and then just uh, immunostaining those, those cells, double positive cells uh, with neuronal markers. I, I think that would be very stringent uh, uh, criteria to, to say these are converting. I think uh, what we are doing here is very stringent. The TD tomato label, the lineage traces are converted into neurons. What else you want? <laughs> this is a very stringent, right? But because I, I tell you I one was, thing. I, I was looking at the... tell you one thing. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you in retina, the yeah. Mueller glia, when yeah. we use the transcription factor convert, we see the cell soma yeah. migrating along this Mueller glia to the yeah. photoreceptor layer. And okay. the photoreceptor nucleus, as you know, is tiny. But yeah. this Mueller glia, the cell soma, is very big. There is nothing else can assure me that is converging. It is not a leakage, okay? All right.
Let's yeah. uh, we can talk uh, uh, in another time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Great. Yeah. So, is there any more questions? I saw somebody raise them, but yeah. All right. And, and okay, let's the let's just shut a few minutes after this. Okay. I, I, is it one more question, I believe, uh, from uh, if you can ask yourself, please. Yeah, hi. Hey, uh, 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 yes, I do have uh, two questions. One is about AAV and your D1. So, go on. how do you know that uh, those virus reported positive neurons are not endogenous neurons? Well, I have just shown you in the lineage trace the astrocyte of expressing TD tomato, we add the neuro D1, they convert into neurons. If we add the GIP, they remain astrocyte. But what that evidence is not because from the live image, we cannot tell actually they are neurons or not. So Look, but Charlie, that's still it's not, not a direct one. evidence that should, they are not in largest neurons. So tell me, you are using lineage traced astrocyte, and you believe you are lineage uh, traced astrocyte, that they are astrocyte, and then now they become neurons. How can they become endogenous neurons? Tell me. <laughs> but there is a way, right? You can endogenous, you have first label endogenous neurons, and to see whether any of those endogenous neurons actually express your marker, for example, your D1 GFP, right? So, Chun Li, in your cell paper, you show very clear, when you give neuro D1, your conversion efficiency figure 1B is almost, the, you know, 95% or more. When you use retrograde tracing to pre-label those previous neurons, what do you got? Leakage rate, 37.5%. What are those other 62.5%? Where do you, they come? The only leakage rate in your paper is 37.5%. The other 62.5% has to come somewhere. That's conversion, come on. It's the conversion la, la, and the leakage la, la, added together is 100%. Let, let dilute your it. AAV, okay. dilute your AAV, see how much leakage you get. Add enhancer, see whether your lineage trace astrocyte can be converted into neuron. Do the two things. I ask you for two years. Very simple. So let me, let me, let me, do it. Now, if you cannot read the paper, the paper clearly shows that this is a retrograde tracing from the spinal cord. So in that case, only a small portion of the colloquial spinal neurons can be traced. So, are but you in the, your me, DIY, are you telling me that neurons. your method is not reliable? Are you telling the world your method is really not reliable? But, okay, well, let, let's right. move on to my second question. So the second question regarding the retrovirus in your D1. So how do you know that those neurons are not from the endogenous neural stem cells. Because the retrovirus <laughs> neural DIY can in fact endogenous neural stem cells and the endogenous neural stem cells once expressed neural D1, they can become neurons. So how do you know that? Totally. They're not from the stem cells. What we did is the adult mouse cortex, the read my cell stem cell paper. In the first the beginning, I said to avoid adult neural stem cells, we use adult mouse cortex, the cortical astrocyte. And you know those are end point differentiated astrocyte. They are not neural stem cell. You know that, okay? But there is a and we use, we use the 14 month old Alzheimer's disease, cortical astrocyte, come on Chen Li. Do you believe okay, those are stem cells? I, I do not want to argue in front of everybody. Okay, let's. Uh, let oh, okay, uh, so I yeah I think it's uh, okay. So everybody, so I I'm I'm sorry to I have to go to work. Okay, uh, a few minutes. Uh, I think it was more more debate is good, right? Uh, we should. We should it is continue great. This discussion. Yes. So but I think I truly owes the world oh, okay, that's that's it. two that's simple it. So that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that we have more paper coming, I'm sure, in the field, yep. right? Uh, yes. Uh, on it, uh, for it, against it, yeah, I believe it will be uh, for a while. For a while. The debate, of, the debate yes. is, is good, right? So so see, Aaron has some wine. We, we should have some wine serving. When we yes. Have this meeting. Yeah. So see, we need a we, we have, need a wine wine party yeah, we have, together. We should have debate. a discussion discussing you know in the white testing some occasions right in China is states. 
Okay, uh, Aaron, thanks to all. Just call, call yeah. tonight. You enjoy early oh, 3 p.m. or 3 a.m. already in Europe. So I, have, I, have, to... I have a very nice swimming yeah. pool. I'm about to go jump in and calm down, yeah. but it was good chatting science with everyone. Good. See everyone next week. Wine. I go sleep. Yes. Yeah. I, all I, right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. So, see you all next week. Okay. All right. Thank you, you very much. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. no, no